In this video, we're going to learn how to print out a 2D array using C. The first thing we'll do is define preprocessor constants for the number of rows and columns in the 2D array. So we'll have here, number define rows, and we'll have four rows, and number define calls for columns, and we'll have five columns. Now we can use these preprocessor constants to declare and work with our 2D array. So we'll have here int array and then rows and calls. So this will declare a 2D array of ints called array that has four rows and five columns. We could initialize the array with values right here. So we'll have is equal to, and then we'll have one, two, three, four, five for the first row, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the second row, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 for the third row, and then finally 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 for the fourth row. So next, we can output this 2D array. Typically what that involves is outputting each element in the 2D array, starting from this top left element, going down to the bottom right element. What we'll do to solve this problem is create a loop inside of a loop. We call that a nested loop. The outer loop is going to have a counter variable i that's going to loop over each row index. So initially, i is going to be zero, and we'll use i to access this first row in the 2D array. Then in the next iteration of the outer loop, i is going to be one, and we'll use i to access the second row in this 2D array. And then in the next iteration of the loop, i is going to be two, and we'll use i to access the third row. And then in the final iteration of the loop, i is going to be three, and we'll use i to access that last row. Now the inner loop is gonna have a counter variable j. And for each iteration of the outer loop, when i is zero, i is one, i is two, and i is three, we'll have the inner loop run. And the inner loop is going to use its counter variable j to loop over all of the row indexes. So j will initially be zero. But what we'll do is increment j by one with each iteration of the inner loop. So j is gonna be zero, and then one, and then two, and then three, and then four. And we can use the combination of i and j to access each element in this 2D array. So let's actually create these loops now. Down here, we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than rows, and i plus plus. So with rows being four, this means i is going to stop incrementing and the loop is going to stop when i reaches four because i will no longer be less than four at that point. Let's then make the inner loop. So we'll have here four int j is equal to zero, j is less than calls, j plus plus. So again, the counter variable j is going to go from zero up until four, because with calls being five, once j is equal to five, it's no longer going to be less than calls and this loop is going to stop. Now we can use the counter variables i and j to output every element in the array. So for this inner loop body, we'll have printf percent d space and then array at the index i and j. And this will now print out every element in this 2D array going from the top left down to the bottom right. Because this outer loop here is going to start off with i being zero. So initially when this inner loop runs and we use the counter variable i here, we'll be accessing the first row in the 2D array. And j is going to go from zero to one to two to three to four, which means we'll be outputting each element in that first row going from the left to the right. Then the outer loop is going to run again, but i will have been incremented. i will now be one, which means when we use the index i to access the array here, we'll be outputting this second row in the 2D array. j will again go from zero to one to two to three to four, and we'll be outputting each element in that second row going from the left to the right. And this will continue until we've output all the 2D array elements. 
I'm going to output a new line after outputting all these values. So here we'll have printf and then the special new line character. We should now test out our program. So we'll save, compile, and run the program. And here we get the values in our 2D array. From 1 to 20, output one after the other, separated by a space. So our program is working. Now often when outputting a 2D array, we want to output the values into a 2D grid, or a table of information, because a 2D array has rows and columns by definition. So what we could do is output a new line after outputting the values for a row. So that way the next row of values gets output on the next line of the terminal. So for example, we could have printf and then backslash n here. So after outputting all the values in a row, we'll output a new line character. So that way the next row of values outputs on the next line of the terminal. So we can now save, compile, and run the program, and we see that the 2D array does output as a table now, but notably, the columns are not aligned. So 5, 10, 15, and 20 here are all part of the same column, but it's not aligned well in this output here. We could use the width field to ensure each value is output into a field of the same width. This will have the effect of giving our columns the same width. So I could say here, percent %3D, and 3 here is called the width field. It's going to make it so that each integer outputs into a field of three characters in width, no matter what. So for example, 20 here really only needs two characters to be output, and 5 really only needs one character to be output. But because we have this three here, they're going to be output into fields of width three characters, even though it's not really needed. Now the unused characters in those fields are just going to be the blank space character. Now if we save, compile, and run the program, we now get this nice aligned table of output where each value is being output into a field of width three characters. So one here is in a field of width three characters, as is 16. Now, when we output every value in every column like this, it has the effect of giving every column in the table a width of three characters. Now, one more thing we may want to do is output our 2D array using a function. So we could create a function to do that. Up here, we'll have void. Because the function is not going to return any value, we'll call the function print 2D array and the function will accept a 2D array as an argument. So we'll have here int array rows and calls. And then in the function body, we can just cut and paste this code. So we'll cut this and then paste it up here. And then we can call this function in main. So here we'll have print 2D array and we'll pass it our 2D array. And then we can save, compile, and run the program, and the 2D array is going to print out the same as before. The advantage with using a function is that we could call this function in different places in our code, rather than repeating the code to output the 2D array again and again. So this is how we can output a 2D array using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.